Okay, uh, first off, this is the one year anniversary of uh, Aaron Lowe's passing. And I uh, just want to let the Aaron's family know how uh, much they're in our thoughts and prayers. And, and uh, we miss him. And uh, just uh, want to make sure we acknowledge that and, and uh, always remember uh, Aaron and Ty. And so, um, that being said, uh, talking about the game on uh, Saturday. We handled our business down in Tempe. I <clears> thought <throat> we played well, both offensively and defensively. Special teams was was so-so. But uh, in particular, on defense, we played well, and, and in particular, against the run. That was uh, really an outstanding performance by our defense, uh, defending the run game. And uh, that really was uh, the difference in the game, I and mean, they couldn't get anything going running the football. And that makes offense very difficult when you can't run the football. Uh, offensively, I thought we were balanced, did a nice job uh, mixing things up, uh, had some big plays. Uh, Dalton Kincaid made some big plays. Uh, Cam Rising was, uh, was sharp. And so, uh, you know, we, we only turned the ball over one time. We were plus two in the takeaway margin or the turnover margin. When we're plus two, it's 90% plus chance of winning the game. So that was, that was uh, another big factor. <clears throat> um, the big downer from the game was Brant Keithy. You know, he's lost for the season, and uh, that's a, a big blow to our offense. He was a, a huge part of uh, what we do offensively, but but uh, we'll have to have guys step up and, and pick up the slack. Uh, means an opportunity for Thomas Yasmin, uh, Munir McLean, uh, you know, just uh, Landon uh, Ken Kendall and, or Logan Kendall, and so they've got to uh, pick it up. And we'll miss him. And he's a great leader, great person. Uh, it breaks your heart to see something like that happen to a senior. Uh, silver lining, if there is one, uh, he's inside the the five games. Uh, you know, you get four games to redshirt. He did have a redshirt year, so if he chooses and wants the opportunity to come back next season, that's available to him. But uh, otherwise, uh, it's a tough blow to our team. Uh, looking forward, we got Oregon State coming to town. Outstanding football team played SC right down to the wire a couple days ago. Um, you know, there Jonathan Smith's doing a great job up there. I think this is his fifth season and has really uh, built that program back up the right way. And we will have our hands full this week. It'll be a great uh, Pac-12 contest in Rice Eccles kickoff at noon on Saturday. So questions? Start with Justin. Yeah, with Brant Keithy out, like I mentioned, we're going to have to have some guys step up. Uh, Dalton Kincaid's role becomes even bigger. You know, he's already a big part of the offense as well. But, but uh, as I mentioned, Thomas Yasmin is really the guy that that uh, takes most of, uh, will take most of the reps that, uh, that would uh, be typically for Brandt. And so uh, just got to continue to move forward. Injuries are the most unfortunate part of this sport. And, and my, the, the part of my job that I uh, like the least is seeing these young men get, get hurt. But uh, like I said, just got to move forward. We've got a lot of football left. Got two thirds of the season left and, and uh, got to figure out how to continue to score points and move the ball. Uh, lower leg, a leg, leg injury, yeah. <clears throat> hey, what did you see from, from that USC game that, that kind of shows you what Oregon State is? Are they very similar to last year, or did, they, did you see something different in that game? No, a lot of similarities, and, and they're a lot like us offensively. Balanced attack, uh, employ tight ends a bunch, you know, it, use multiple tight ends. Um, play action pass game, you know, off the run action. So there's a, there's a lot of of characteristics with their offense that match up to our offense, but but uh, they've been running that scheme well for a few years now, and and uh, it was a actual low, you know, actually a low-scoring game. And the thing that really did them in was the turnovers. I think it was three or four to zero in the turnover margin, four four picks, and so that was really the difference in the game. Excellent about the depth overall, given the injuries right now. Good, we. Uh, are deeper, I believe, we believe, than we've ever been since we've been in the, you know, in the Pac-12, 11 years now, and that's just been a, an ongoing process to, to uh, 
build depth in the roster and talent throughout the 85-man roster, the scholarship roster. And I think our walk-ons are more talented and better than they've been. So, so you got to be able to uh, have the next man up mentality. Um, one positive this week is we should certainly get Mo Diabate back this week, barring anything unforeseen uh, going forward. You know, if there's no setbacks, then he'll he'll be available this week, which will be a big positive for us. You had obviously said that uh, Jaquinta Jackson will play at running back now. What, what do you need to see from him to kind of now progress in that role, knowing that he, it's been a while since he's played? Right? Uh, get the offense down I shouldn't say get the offense and get the footwork and the and all the things the nuances of the running back position as a quarterback he obviously knows the offense inside and out but specific to the running back position you know he's got to have all the details as far as like I said the footwork and the blitz pickups and, and that type of thing and and uh, that's what he's gonna work hard at he only had you know two and a half days of practice last week and uh, ended up Getting some, giving us some quality carries, scored a touchdown, and so we accept, expect him to take another step forward this week. And and as the weeks progress, just continue to get better and better. Can you expand on how that running back room is shaping up? Obviously, Tavion held out in the first half, and Chris <coughs> Curry. Now you have Jaquinton in the mix. Mm -hmm. It seems like uh, a lot of guys have, but it's a little bit of plus. Yeah, a lot of guys. Uh, Jalen Glover played good football on Saturday as well. Had some good carries. And so it's, uh, you know, with Tavion, Jalen, now Jaquindon, and uh, Makai, those are the top four, will be the top four. Uh, Charlie Vincent's uh, would be the fifth guy right now. And uh, that's who we're working with is those, uh, those guys. And, and uh, we still feel really, really good about that room. I mean, losing Chris was a blow, but, but uh, we've got plenty of talent left in that room. What does Tavion have to do to get back to being a feature back? Consistency. Uh, on and off the field, I guess the short version, consistency and accountability on and off the field. Any other questions? What does Yasmin have to do to, I mean, he's going to play more, it looks like, but what oh, yeah. does he have to do to really get where you want? There was a reason he wasn't on the field. I know Assignment that. sound. Be, uh, eliminate mental mistakes. That's that's the biggest issue right now, or has been the biggest issue. He was pretty darn good in the game Saturday when he came in uh, for Brant, but, but that's been what's held him back and uh, like we've said before he started at ground zero when he got to us he had no football experience and so everything has been a, a process for him a learning process and he's uh, he's better now than he's ever been and uh, if he can eliminate you know the few errors that do show up on occasion that's uh, what's going to make him an even better player what has he got that you like he's got size speed good hands um, he's athletic and so he's, you know, he's a prototypical tight end, 6'5", 250, runs. And you know, if you watch our kickoff team, he's the first one down every single time. And, and so that shows you the speed he has. And, and he does have great hands. And it's just the football savvy, you know, having never played, is, is uh, he put him at a big disadvantage. But he's made up a lot of ground with that. Coach, the offensive line started strong this season, it felt like. Have they are they going through growing pains at all, or how would you assess the offense? I wouldn't say growing pains, but I'd say they weren't imposing their will like we feel they can in the game Saturday night, and especially in the first half. We picked up things in the third quarter and had a much better uh, rushing production in the third quarter, and then we kind of backed off in the fourth quarter and just tried to get the game over with. But but uh, we have high expectations of those guys, and, and uh, we expect them to be – uh, dominant week in and week out. That's you know whether that's realistic or not. That's our expectation. Can you give us some insight on the evolution of the, the defense, Mo mostly the front seven? Obviously, uh -huh. I asked you last week about uh, you guys weren't as stout against the run so far this year as you usually are. Mm -hmm. You allowed six yards to active FBS leader in rushing. So, what was that shift and what was that focus like this like last well, week? Well, the, the fundamentals and the technique have been getting better and better, and it really the front the front has gotten better. Uh, since the first game. The first game, as we mentioned, was a, a, just an aberration, I guess you could say. It was, it was not good. And uh, the front has, and particularly the inside, the tackles, you know, we've, we've pretty much established that Junior Tafuna and Aliki Vimahi are going to be the, the two guys that get the bulk of the reps. And those guys played exceptionally well on Saturday. Uh, Peppa, uh, Simonte Peppa came in and gave us some good reps uh, in, in relief of those guys. But that's been the biggest key is those tackles have settled in and really are doing a great job with their gap control, with, which lets the linebackers fit and flow. Uh, the defensive ends have been pretty solid all year uh, controlling the edges. But, but the play of the D tackles, uh, the improved play of the D tackles has been the biggest difference. 
October is going to be a, a much more difficult month than you've had this season so far. But what do you think that month can do to kind of test your team? What do you think you can learn? From I'm just focused on Oregon State. You know, I, I'm sure we have some tough games in October. I couldn't tell you who they are, but that's legitimate. But uh, we're going to put everything we have in, into this next game. Coach, how, how much can you expect from Jaquinton State, being is that he's kind of changing positions mid-season? Well, if he didn't have the uh, fairly extensive running back background, you know, that would be a different story. But he has a lot of experience as a running back, as I mentioned. It's been a few years. But uh, he's, he's had that, uh, you know, that uh, – experience in the position and the workload as a full-time starter at that position and so it's uh, I don't know if it's like riding a bike but it, it certainly he'll draw upon that and and uh, giving him a whole week of prep will be much more uh, conducive to his success than than throwing him in kind of midweek last week you brought up Aaron Lowe I'm curious looking back on it a year later what kind of impact has he and Ty had on the program Huge impact on the program and myself. Um, they're in our thoughts daily. I mean, we have plenty of things throughout the building, reminders and, and tributes uh, to those two young men. Uh, Aaron's mom and Ty's mom will be coming to a game here shortly, uh, and we'll honor them. But uh, they, they, they've had a, they've had and continue to have a big impact on, on our team and, and uh, our program as a whole. Coach, we talked about Colt Bishop and his kind of mm -hmm. emergence, but R.J. Hubert has really been solid at, at the other safety spot. How would you assess the play so far? Very good. The safety play overall has been very good. Uh, the two guys that back the safeties up are really good players. Clayton Isbell at the free spot is is going to be real good when he gets his, uh, you know, gets himself completely up to speed schematically and, and uh, figures out exactly what the position entails here. And Sione Vaki is going to be is really good behind uh, Cole. But those two guys are the starters. Cole is a special player. Um, you know, you can hit a sack, he had a pick, uh, several tackles. I mean, he's a guy that uh, is a complete football player and can do it all. Um, and, uh, you know, he's only in his second year, a true sophomore. So what he's doing as a true sophomore is pretty amazing. And then RJ, what a success story. You know, to come back from those injuries that he's had and. And uh, he's had several setbacks, but he just keeps after it. And uh, this is the payoff for him. And hopefully he can stay healthy the rest of the year and continue to have uh, a good year. Oregon State with those four picks, is there anything USC is doing that you can learn from? Copy or uh, maybe a little bit, but uh, mainly it was just a quarterback having to throw the ball under duress and, and just getting rid of it as he's getting hit and, and that type of thing was, was the main thing. Back to Cole Bishop, you mentioned rushing the passer a little bit. Mm -hmm. You guys play him in the box a lot as well. Mm -hmm. Is he a guy you see maybe taking those that Chase Hansen route, or is he a, is he a defensive back? He could. Uh, time will tell. He's uh, pretty much stayed the same size since he's been here, about 205. And so uh, Chase was a little bigger frame, a little taller, uh, a little thicker. And so whether Cole, you know, his body – starts to put on weight or not, I mean, it's he'll be on the field somewhere. And if he stays the dimensions he is, probably stay right where he's at. If he uh, gets bigger in the off season, then uh, we'll look at the possibility of sliding him forward. Yes, you had a couple of long kick returns last week. With yeah, uh, poor, uh, concerned, uh, very concerned, because it showed up last year and it was it was not a problem until this past week. And and. Uh, We've got to do a better job of coaching. You know, that we're not rotating. I mean, they, they, what we call a break return, where they start to the boundary and then break it to the field. That's the return that did us in uh, the most, did the most damage. And uh, we've got to do a better job of rotating, uh, staying in our lanes. We missed some tackles, so it is a big concern, and we got to get that corrected. Any more questions? Okay, thanks, guys. Saturday at noon. <laughs>